back in this bitch, uh Know we full attack in this shit, uh You know the full Mac came to quit, uh So promise you don't want no issue. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 More Than 90... Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 More Than 92 podcast where we always keep one on it. God damn. Where we always keep it 100. We are your host, Harrison. Najee. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. All right. So, yes, today we are joined by he is an entrepreneur, businessman, multiple, multiple companies. The man is like a walking money magnet, but he is also like my brother, the oldest friend I've had in my life since the first grade. People, I'm talking about the first grade in Miss Cole's class. Because when I met him two weeks later, he moved down the street from my house. This is my brother, Darius James, is joining us today, entrepreneur, owner of the Vehicle City Conies. And we got the Icebox. What is is uh is it Icebox? Yeah, Icebox. Okay, yeah. Icebox, which is an Italian ice of his own treats and treasures. So I want to thank you this time to welcome my brother on today. How are you today? Doing good, doing good, man. Thanks for having me, man. Family. So, you know, I opened it up briefly by saying, you know, you're an entrepreneur, but uh, I want to start it off by saying, you know, at what age did you kind of get that business sense of, you know, you were young. So when did you get that business hustle grinding to you? What would you say? I mean, you, shoot, you already know. We was like 11 years old, walking around the neighborhood with lawnmowers, cutting grass, you know what I mean? And, you know, I put everybody on. I had I had you doing some. I had Tyler doing some. We just we just always work together to make make the bigger picture work. Yeah, and I know what's really cool about that is uh, me and you've talked about this off air all the time. It's like, uh, you know, I feel like one thing that we don't see a lot of times from the younger generation, we probably touch on it later, but we don't see like, like that hustle and grit to go get something. You know, um, our parents had money. But that wasn't enough because it was their money. We wanted our own, you know. And so, you know, you transcended that hustle of cutting grass to regular jobs. You know, you had your own business and things like that. Um, how do you stay hungry? I mean, you got to stay hungry. It, it's not it's not a way. It's It's got to be in you. It's either in you or it's not. You know, it's a lot of people out here that say it's not opportunities and stuff to do what they want to do. They just not taking those opportunities. You know, it's something you got to wake up every day and say, hey, I want to go out here and get this money. Because if not, you're going to lay in bed and you ain't going to make it. So so you feel like uh, your kids and stuff like that, if they don't have that that hunger or that drive, what what do you do then? Oh, they're going to they're going to spend all your money. You go, you're going to work all your life. You feel me? And then they going they going to take your money and piss it away. That's what I'm saying. You can't make it easy. We didn't we didn't grow up where it was easy. You feel me? It was stuff that we wanted. We couldn't get it, so we had to go out and figure a way to make that happen. You know, and that's the same thing you got to do with your kids. You can't just sit there and spoil them and give them everything and expect them to want to work and have that hunger. You got to create it. What would you say to somebody that's questioning your drive because you we're in a situation where you didn't have to have that drive. Do you feel like you can still say, I'm just as hungry as somebody who's gone without and why so? You can, but like I said, it, it gotta be, it gotta be something that you've seen in the, in the people around you and what they did. You know what I mean? Cause what happens is a lot of times you, you got that soul breadwinner, you sitting there and you relying on them and then they gone. And then once they gone, then, then it's in you. It's that fight or flight. Uh, who were some of your earliest inspirations? Man, I can't even say just one because I looked at, I followed the money. So so my inspirations changed over time once I realized that certain people ain't even really have what I wanted. You feel me? They had the stuff that looked like what I thought they, you know what I mean, had what not. But once I got down to the grit and started looking and understanding what it takes to look like money and not actually making money, you know, those those things change, you know, back in the day, people used to be talking about they want to be like Donald Trump and, you know, all this stuff like that. But now that that's a total different conversation when you when you get you look at them finances of what, you know, type of debt and credit he was rolling on back in them times, you know. So it's just it's just how do you want to function, you know, but as far as me, my inspiration Master P, you know, that was one of the pre people I've seen that really, you know, got it out the mud and, you know, out the trunk, whatever it took and put his whole team on and always encourage, you know, other people to, 
keep on going and you know making stuff happen. Do, do you have any uh, like siblings, any brothers or sisters, or anything like older brothers and sisters? A lot of them, man. I'm like, I'm like one to thirteen on my dad's side. You feel oh. me? So did you, uh, like you said, your inspiration, did you have any family members that was insp that you seen, like they were growing, they were doing their own business, or, or and sometimes, a lot of times what we have is, we see somebody doing bad and not doing good, and that'll inspire you to be like, oh no, I can't do this, I gotta be, I gotta do better than this. Man, I ain't gonna lie, I come from a long line of hustlers, man, you know what I mean? Everybody in my family, from my, my, my moms, my grandmother, everybody, you know what I mean? They got hustles, everybody got different, you know what I mean? We always had food to to do whatever we wanted you feel me we never worried about it sure we can you know we can whip up whatever makes some money you know so it's just always seeing that hustle my granddad they was all hustlers you know what i mean so that's where you know it do it get passed on so with that we were talking about the next generation um you know at least 70 uh, 66 point six percent of us have kids on there what is it that you hope to pass to your kids you know uh i know me and you learn stocks in our 20s to avoid having to get 30 40 and not knowing these things and we i consider our generation the the generational wealth um generation so what are some things that you want to instill upon your next of kin and what what are some of the things that you're laying in place to where they don't have to run into some of the same problems that we ran into, not as bad as our parents, but that we ran into so where they can get off right. It's making the right investments. That that's that's the most important thing. You know, a lot of people, some people want to put their money in stocks, some people put their money in houses, some people put their money in cars. You know, me, I like to diversify everything, have a have a little bit in each place to just, you know, you just never know. It, it's always a rainy day type of situation where you just got to have multiple sources in place, you know, so you, you got to just, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say because the times have changed. You know, you, you might've asked me this question some years ago and I'd be like, shoot, I want to pass on 12 houses to my kids. You feel what I'm saying? You could have asked me a couple years ago, I'm trying to pass on these stocks to my kids. You know what I mean? But this day and age, shit, I need my kids to have a farm to be self-sufficient, sustain, you know, how to survive. It's just a, it's a different way of thinking on how we change our minds. So so then, uh, like, even think about the, the things you have invested in or the things you have did. Can you, can you name what's something that you've ever had, like, a bad investment? Like, have you ever had, like, something bad go wrong? advice that you give somebody, like, in those scenarios, what, where do you go from that? You know what I'm saying? Because we always talk about the good things and how things will go great. But what, what you going to do when things go bad? You put all your put all your money in this and then boom, and flop. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't have a nightclub. You know what I mean? I, I put money into nightclub. Thought that it was going to be, you know, had these projections, had these numbers, you know, had everything all peaches and cream. But at the end of the day, Stuff don't come through. Stuff fall through. You you know, what I learned is that you can't put your faith in another man. You can only put your faith in what you can do. Don't go off on other people's investments and ventures. You feel me? Like either create your own or get behind something that you truly believe in. Because if you if you're just doing it, you looking at some numbers and you think it's going to equate to no work and all pay. Most of the times it ain't going to work out. You know, so what I tell people is always do what you like. Do what you want to do every day. Don't do what your homie trying to do every day. You got to have your own individuality to actually prosper. Because if not, you're not going to put that time and work into it. So, so, so I was going to say, so now, what do you feel like was your big break? Like, what do you feel like? you like, okay, damn, like, this was it. Like, I'm glad I did this. Now this is my big break. I had to say the food truck, you know, after after doing everything and making a lot of investments that I made, uh, I will say that the food truck running it and doing it is, is one of the things I actually enjoy doing. And it's it it gives you what you what you think in a return. You know, it's not no wasted time. Yeah, you kind of jump. Well, you, you hit on what I was going to say. So you have Vehicle City Coney's and Icebox 615. Yeah. And this is a different venture from you. I, I've known a lot of stuff. You've done auto mechanics. You've done a club, like you said. You've done car lots. Car lots. A lot of stuff. You, you're the ultimate hustler. Um, 
I look to you for so many things in quiet and make sure that I'm making a move to never stay stagnant. I always tell people that the best type of friends you have are the friends that push you and make you mad at yourself, even if you're not doing nothing bad in life, but they make you mad that you ain't there first. And it's always a competition because at the end of the day, you all want something better for yourself. So we got Vehicle City Conies and just give us uh, the backstory of what made you start that and just a little bit about the company in general. The food truck well the the start of it was like you know kind of going off of with with josh with naji you know naji said was one of the things was uh you know you make some of them investments and after making an investment and losing so much money i'm like look on my next one i'm not i'm not doing nothing but what i want to do you feel me 100 percent exactly what i want to do me and my moms we always had this dream of you know having a restaurant and and cooking food and doing all that stuff, you know. So what I did was I hung around in the food industry for a while. I got friends that's, you know, five-star chefs and stuff. I hung around in restaurants. I seen how everything worked. I realized how much it costs, the overhead that you got to spend to try to stay inside, you know, a brick and mortar. And so I realized that, you know, if I'm mobile, I can do what I want, how I want, because I, I do do a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to be open seven days a week. You know what I mean? I might be in New York, California, Miami or whatever. You feel me? And I might just be here a few days. Like, okay, cool. We want to go out and make some money. So it gave me that versatility to be able to, to make my own schedule and, you know, hit the events and be out there with the people. So how do you feel? How do you feel? it is working with family because i know a lot of times it can be hit or miss you know so because you you know if you got a co-worker you can say hey you done you fired i don't want you to come to work no more yeah. but you can't call, you can't call mom and be like look mom you, you fired i don't need you to come back to work no more hey the toughest thing you'll ever do i promise you is trying to work with family you know what i mean but you got to know who you're working with and like i said it, it come down to do they want it just as bad as you you feel me is it something that they passionate in just as much as you? You feel me? Because you you have battles of passion and y'all fighting to make it better, not fighting against each other. You know what I mean? So so that's what I always say with, with working with family. But I, man, most of the time, that is the hardest people to work with. So uh, go into the inspiration behind Vehicle City Conies, because a lot of people don't know in Nashville, at least the where it comes from, you know, like some of the history of Flint cooking and things like that. Right, right. So I'm from Flint, Michigan. Harrison is from Detroit, Michigan. We always had this battle of who had the best conies or whatever. I grew up in Flint, so of course we got the best conies. You feel me? He grew up in Detroit, they got the best conies. But my thing was I don't even eat hot dogs, like that ain't even my thing. But every time I would go up to uh, Flint visiting family or whatever, we always went and had conies. So it was something I was like, if I could ever do something and bring something to Nashville that they missing, it's going to be a coney, plain and simple. And also, we got a lot of people that's from there uh, that work in GM and Spring Hill and all kind of uh, surrounding areas. And they was like our first first people, you know. We used to do a lot of caterings and stuff like that for them, and it just it just really really grew into what we seen today. So, so, so how did you like? Even though you from uh, Flint and stuff like that, but how did you get like the perfect recipe or the perfect hot dog or you know whatever that to bring like to make it to where people actually feel like like if somebody is in Nashville and they from Flint. And they go to your food truck. Are they gonna be like, "Oh my God, this tastes just like I'm at home"? I'm gonna tell you one. I'm gonna tell you one name, and this name right here resonate ev with everybody where I'm from, and that's Kogo Hot Dogs. I'm a direct affiliate and distributor of Kogo Hot Dogs. I'm the only person in the state of Tennessee that distribute Kogo Hot Dogs. So that what the Kogo Hot Dog is, it has a, a a natural casing and it has a snap when you bite it. So like down here, a lot of people, they like Nathan hot dogs. It's the American classic. They don't even know what a Kogo is. So once they experience the Kogo hot dog paired with our homemade chili sauce, that that's a, it's a meat sauce. It's not a runny loose sauce, nothing like that. It's a real hearty meat sauce. You feel me? 
and it's just an experience that is like none other, you know. So, so the, he, oh, go ahead, Josh. I was gonna say, so the so the recipes did the recipes come from your family, or did you make the recipes? Like our our, our sauce is a, a homemade recipe. You know what happened was that we used to, it was a lot of places up there, and everybody had kind of their own family recipe. Nobody shared. You don't know what's in the next person. Oh, no, no. So I know what it is supposed to taste like. You know. So that's what we came and replicated the taste of our childhood. Not what it tastes like today because it ain't even the same. Like I can't even go up there and get nothing better than what I got. You know what I mean? So it's, I feel like I've surpassed that in, in that standpoint because the original people in the game, they're not in the game no more. So it's just people that's that's replicating it, but they're not doing it justice. Uh, okay. He actually kind of undersold it. Uh, he's actually more of a game changer than he gives himself credit because uh he's not the first coney restaurant down there and anybody from nashville knows that when general motors uh opened that everybody from michigan came down here when the plant opened when it used to be saturn so where darius's best draw is is that he's a piece of home that a lot of people may not be able to get unless you want to take an eight hour drive and his coney and loose burger is like a up north detroit michigan and flint michigan specialty so it's based in a loose burger for people don't know is just take a chili dog you take the chili out of it and you put the chili on a burger and then that's a loose burger but what makes darius's cooking great is it you can just taste the hominess in it it's not it doesn't taste processed nothing take you taste like three niggas at the crib cooking some stuff up and then bring you something authentic it's kind of like what makes people which would make people go to cookouts the restaurant cookout is because you're not getting like anything like from Burger King or some process. You feel like you're getting something authentic. And why I said he's a game changer is because he's not a restaurant. He's a mobile place. So Darius could take his stuff anywhere he wants to go. And to have people that stay in different parts of Nashville, because where, we're, where we grew up at, most people that stay, they stay closer to the plant. Spring Hill or Murfreesboro, all those places out. Darius is able to bring something than that to everybody it's a game changer and you don't have to come to one central location so he can take um his stuff and make it national or at least not, not national statewide citywide and is the fact that he's giving you something authentic he's selling out and then you also dip your toe into the desserts so let everybody know about icebox 615. icebox man that's a hey, that's the hey. I'm telling you, people don't know, you know, a lot of stuff like like James said, you know, I'm a uh, certified ice cream master. You feel me? Like that's what people don't know is that I do stuff outside the box. You know what I mean? And so this year what we started doing was uh, actually making our own in-house Italian ices and ice creams. So uh, especially for black people, it's not something that we, we go into and you know think about that area but it's something that is kind of different because we sell what's mostly a water-based ice cream like a lot of black people we don't be messing with dairy and stuff it just ain't it, it just ain't the, the best for our systems so with the water with the water base it's, it's an all-natural product water sugar and we use all natural fruits you know locally to flavor so with that, you're giving people something that is for everybody. There's no division. Not everybody like hot dogs. You know what I mean? Some people don't even like meat. But it's that one thing that's universal. You can give it to your dog. You know what I mean? So it's just something that I feel that I can totally stand behind and be happy to promote. Do you, uh do y'all have like a uh, different scheduling? Like, do you have like, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, at eight o'clock, we're going to be here at the plan or we're going to be in this location or y'all have like certain places. Like people already know, like, Hey man, we just got out of this place. That's going over here and here to stand. We got some, you know, mostly right now we do is events and caterings. So, you know, people book us to do festivals, concerts, cookouts neighborhood events you know we we do there and then we got people that follow us and then we, we let them know like look we're gonna be in your area you know come out mess with us you know so it's just it's just more of a scheduling it's not a set time and place because like i said i'm i'm here there and everywhere you know so it's just more wh whatever i got on the schedule 
So which one is harder, dairy or, uh, I mean, ice desserts or fast the the hot foods? Hot foods is is definitely more work in uh, hot foods because you got it's a lot of prep. And that's what people don't see. You know, it's the behind the scenes work. You know, when you when you just out there on the scene working or whatever, that's the end. You know, what I mean, that's the easy part. That's the you know, that's the smooth, but getting everything ready, you know, it might take weeks, you know what I mean, to prep. You got to get ready to feed 2,000 people, you know what I mean? So you got to have the stuff already, but as far as the frozen desserts, it's just product, you know, it's just it's just scoop and go, scoop and go. Have y'all had a situation where y'all ran out of food too early or something like that? Man, last night. I sold out last night. <laughs> I came home with uh, uh, two two pieces of bread <laughs> and some drinks. That's it, man. So you just you just never know, man, sometimes, especially with um, we've been operating during COVID. And so now with stuff opening up, you know, we're doing some of the same events that we did last year and it's double, triple the people, you know. So it's it's just it's just the time and you just never know. You just never know. I understand. Like that. I said, we are definitely proud of everything you accomplished. Let everybody know the time, what well, the places they can get you for this upcoming week, because we'll put this out by Wednesday. So at least from Wednesday to fr Thursday, Friday, Saturday, let everybody know where you're going to be at for this uh, upcoming week. Uh, this week, the only public event we got, we're going to be Thursday, uh, downtown DJ Street um, from 11 to 2. It's street eats. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of different food trucks out there. You know, come out there, and mess with us. We're gonna have the hot dogs. We're gonna have the Italian ice. It's gonna be a nice day out in the forecast so far. Um, that's about it for this week. And then uh, we're gonna start doing some regularly scheduled events over at our uh, Wedge Hill Market location. So. It's uh, everything we do. We post it on Icebox 615 and Vehicle City County uh, Instagram and Facebook. So you can check those out, you know, keep up with us and show some love. Yeah, I'll probably be home in like two weeks. So I'm going to have to figure out where you are at. At least take somebody. I'm vegan. So I take somebody else out there and bring them out there. Yeah, that's what I said. I got the, you know, that's what the Italian ice for is for the vegan people. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we did some vegan options. I'm not going to lie. We did some vegan. Uh, cheese steaks and stuff like that you know with the impossible meats it, it was cool but like i said it go back into that cooked food you know you got more work behind it and you know you they got the vegans got to turn out you feel me you didn't put all of the the work behind it so it, it just be get your italian nice <laughs> so like i said make sure y'all check out vehicle city conies and Icebox 615 for my brother himself, a great entrepreneur. I did want to ask you, uh, we were talking about this earlier, just from, while well, I was talking about this offline, just from, we're talking about the next generation coming up, right? And I was trying to play kickball with my son. And uh, come to find out he don't know how to play kickball, period. He said, what's that? What's base? And, you know, I get into this conversation with my mom a lot about it's our job as the parents to teach kids the certain aspects of what to do outside and um i sat there i was like girl you ain't come outside and teach us nothing we had to learn everything for ourselves and you know um with the metaverse coming through the evolution of the electronics as he eats some of that ice box himself which is delicious uh what do you feel what do you feel like for this upcoming because you know your little girl will be three is mm -hmm. here right what do no. you feel as our generation, what are we to do with the upcoming kids nowadays? How do we parent this generation? Because we're not as aggressive. We're not as hostile. We don't have as much trauma built in, but we also don't see the need to constantly coddle. What do you feel like is our way to get this upcoming generation the in the house as generation up? What do you feel? It, it's hard to say because, you know, us coming up, we we didn't we probably didn't live up to the expectations of what our parents thought that we were supposed to be out doing. And so I guess that's why they pushed us to, you know, do certain things. But I feel like our, our children are being raised by phones and the digital world, you know, so it, it's either your, your options to separate them for that from that or you got to deal with what comes with it. 
so thankfully, you know, like my daughter, she lives kind of like in a rural, rural place. You know what I mean? She she play her tablets and stuff like that. But they kind of away from, you know, the big city life and all the influences that, that come with it, you know. But she's still three. So it's a, you know, it's a long road ahead. Do you feel like it's our job to go out there and basically instill what we learn by ourselves on kids? Or do you feel like it's up to them? But with the way, go ahead. I'll let you answer that before I end. I I would say, like, my, my, what I would say is, I feel like we should always pass on knowledge. So if it's something that you know, you know, like, yeah, you're not going to be able to pass everything, but if it's like basic things or something that you know, then your kids should know. That That's the only way we're going to get better as a generation. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, because like we was doing something, even with cooking, talking about cooking, if you cooking something and you get stuck somewhere, you're going to call your mom or you're going to call your grandmas or you're going to call someone that's going to be like, hey, you know, I was trying to make this mac and cheese like you made it. Where do I go from there? You know what I'm saying? So they can give you a little more insight. So I feel like that's where everything else when it comes to like sports or stuff like that, because, you know, you might have been the kickball champion when you was a kid. So let alone, you no, know, you got might have been, first and foremost, ain't no might have been. All right. I let that motherfucker ring like gunshots. Uh, foul ball champion. You said what? Foul ball champion. Hey, my nigga, hey, did it make it over the fence? <laughs> you, you know, everybody, everybody favorite part of the year was field day. When field day happened, that's when you had a kickball tournament. It's over. You, you yeah. got to hear that, man. Hey, when I say I collected ribbons, I'm talking about I was a ribbon champion of himself, you know, and I just love field day. I asked Zay about that. He don't know how to play four square, don't know how to play kickball. Don't I he didn't even know who the Miami Dolphins was. And I just I'm just like, where did we we wasn't that involved? We're, we were supposed to be involved with everybody. Like there's no skills at all in this. And I just I try to let I try to let him go about and do his thing. He's a teenager now, you know. And it's like you don't want to be that overly involved parent, but then it's like when you sit there and look at the alternative, like he was here for spring break. He went Isaiah went from reading books constantly to this past spring break. He watched Girlfriends start to season four every day. If I ain't catching up there, you know, there was thick and thin. I love oh, girlfriends, but I don't know if that too. But I'm just like, what is the what is what is the what is like what is the initiative that you can get? I just, I just don't know where do when they get older, are we the part of their failure? Just like, you know, certain aspects that we didn't get from our parents or like, I, I feel like we're in that weird space. Like this is our time to do one or the other. And I don't want to do too much, but I don't want to uh, do nothing at all. You know, like what is, what does involvement look like? Really? That's kind of like, I can be but saying you know, that. What what I, an official involvement. I would say when I really think about it now, though, like uh, I was a center kid. So, you know, a lot of places like when you go to different states and shit, they don't got centers. Like, you know, we got centers. You got Severe and Edge Hill and Rose Park centers. So we grew up in a center and the center taught us everything. Like it was no sport that we didn't. Yeah, from all yeah. the people around you. Yeah, so you going against other communities and stuff like that. So we got this, we got we out south and we're going against the east side centers. And so that was kind of some a little different that we learned just as kids. And it made it to where we know how to play pool and you know, like spades and jack and you know, basketball and baseball and hockey. And like we did all those things, you know. So they taught us how to skate and you know, like we did soccer. So I mean, I just feel like now they got so much stuff that you can put kids into for them to learn stuff. And, you know, like it like we had to send the center was free. So well, luckily you have people that care. But now you got people that like you can go out. They can go to AU teams and practice with the Titans. And, you know, what I'm saying like they can do all kind of stuff now. So it's like you got more opportunities. It's just like actually putting it there or or having the money. Because You know, if you you got your kid in volleyball or gymnastics. Or they going to karate, or they doing something like that. Like all oh, that shit, that could be like twelve hundred dollars a month. You know, just having it because I know people that got kids in gymnastics. They paying eight hundred dollars a month in gymnastics, karate. They paying five hundred dollars a month in that. You said something imperative in that all these what you were doing was experience with others. But what do you do when they get around each other and none of them know how to do any of it? Like think about this, right? This is I was talking to your mom's Darius last time I was in um. Deville, 
I used to stay at your house all the time, or we would stay at Tyler's, or we would go spend the night at each other's houses. But I'm saying Isaiah's not going over anybody's house. It's like we they don't do that. They don't have those type of access where it's like interactions. Like I learned how to play spades. They got a friend. Damn, what you mean they're not going to nobody's house? What I mean is the only time they spend night over somebody's house is a cousin's house. But as far as like you ain't used to stay over your friend's house the night of, or like tether ball or like you go to the boys and girls club and you do stuff there you know because, like i've been to these places and they're on their phones the entire time yeah, or it's, it's because everybody is is a friend online you know like my stepson he'd be like my friend like that's not your friend that's somebody you met online you know and that that's the difference between when we went out to those centers or the ymca or whatever we having that interaction. You seeing this dude like three, four times a week, y'all balling, y'all chilling versus somebody, hey, I'm on Fortnite. You know what I mean? And you playing with these people, it's not the same type of relationship. So this person on Fortnite, like, hey, can we have a sleepover? Hex, no, you can't have no sleep. I don't know who this person is. You know what I mean? I'm not seeing these people's parents. So it's it's different. That's how TJ Henderson got set up on Smart Guy. Out there making yeah. video games in your drawers and stuff. Talking about, let's just... How you underwear basically bathing suits? They are hell no. But even you know, it's so funny. Look at the generation. I'm we get some simple. Remember how we watch old shows and you watch Moesha, Steve Harvey, Wayne's brothers, Martin. They got Biggie on there. They got they got burnt. I mean, uh, they got everybody. They got everybody. Now you look at the shows now, like do you, you don't even care for celebrity like what is really even a celebrity celebrity doesn't even mean the same thing to this generation like you watch these new shows and if you don't have a guest starring whoever was popular and that make you want to watch it they don't even have like that awe or aura it's like whoever is concerns and things are different i was looking at like nickelodeon and that black era of Nickelodeon, Keenan and Kale, Cousin Skeeter, bro, we used to love Cousin Skeeter. Yeah, uh, all it. that, bro, <laughs> like that's it's like it's a different age. And then when somebody like when Ron Harper from the Bulls, I barely knew who the I was barely watching sports at time, but it's oh shit, it's a basketball player. It's just like the priorities and stuff is different. Yeah. It's, it's such a it's such a pendulum shift. It's it's very it's very wild. Like celebrity and brand now, recognition, exactly. And you know what it you is. Know? Because they can go viral, they're technically the celebrities. That's it. You won so, one viral video away from, you know, a little taste of fame versus, you know, you had to jump through hoops and loops to get anywhere back in the day. So it, it, they put you everywhere when you finally made it. But now it's just a short time. You got your time now, and then it's on to the next person. You know, a good song today is going to be gone in six months. You know, it's just yeah. I think I, but you know what I think one thing that, that will help like nowadays, like it's harder for it's harder for like single kids, you know, like kids that don't have no brothers and sisters, it's harder for them. But yeah. the kids still got like older brothers, or they got you know they might have three, four brothers and sisters. I think that kind of helped a little bit because at least you know, like something that they might not know, like they come in a room and their brother be like, Oh, look, let me show you how to do this. And then boom, you know it passed. But if not, they get everything from their parents. So if it, like, and then you now you have these single parents that you know you might have a mother that she's a single parent with two boys, but she don't know no sport, she don't know nothing. She watching you know drama and you know saying so she watching all the different things on on TV and the kids watching that. So that's what they learn. You know what I'm saying? Like they not they not learning all the extra. Aiden Ross, so who made the funniest TikTok video or somebody fuck up. Like I said, they're the celebrity, so maybe that's why they're not impressed by seeing. Like, if I was to see Wayne right now, or Drake, or Snoop, or Nipsey, I'm not doing that. But if I was to, if I was to see them, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be like, oh shit, you know? Like we've talked to people on here, and I get off and be like, how the fuck did I just do that? You know what I'm saying? Like, and then these niggas would come up on there and be like, oh okay, you know? So it's it's definitely a weird thing, but then I guess maybe we put too much stock into a celebrity. I don't know. It, can, it, it it's always a, a pros and cons of that shit. Yeah, but you know what though? They still they still have their celebrities. It's just different. It's different. Yeah. Their celebrities are different. So like you said, it might be somebody, an uh, internet like you know King Batch or like an internet viral person that you know for us we'd be like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, what did that person? You know, say like, who is that? You know that ain't no, like it ain't no Denzel or nothing like that, and they had a little people that's big for them. 
like I said, even plights ain't the same. If you made it to a TV show like Boy Meets World, you made it. Here, ain't nobody watching TV, or it's a Netflix show or something crazy. Like the most one of the most popular people is LeBron James' son, and I know he can't act, but he yeah. a baller. You know, what I'm saying? he owns everything. He got he got more followers. He got more followers than some niggas that are in top grossing movies. Bronny got like two, three. Bronny had like two million followers his first day he created Instagram. LeBron but James you, is something. But, but you, also you, had, you, don't have those, you also don't have those because you got things with younger like the Hannah Montanas. You know, what I'm saying like the little Bow Wows. You don't have like you don't see that that era where like little Bow Wow. He took over the whole block. You know, everybody in school, they had shirts and posters, and Hannah Montana was the same. Like, I little girls, they was like, oh, my God, I love it. You don't see that kind of stuff. What like Bow poster did you have? I didn't have no Bow Wow poster. Oh, okay. I know you did. I know you probably did. I, I, Sabrina had Bow Wow posters. She had Scream Tours, but I know you was up there with them. Is that Josh? <laughs> Let's get it, Bow Wow. Oh, hey, what's up, Sabrina? What's up, Monet? What's up, Stephanie? I know how I feel, and I'm not going to repeat it. I know, I know you was up in there. Represent that. Now we oh, were yeah. going for the posters. Now we know another million you are. <laughs> exactly. As we all got posters behind us right now or something. So uh, we anime. Like anime posters. Well, he got a flower. There's the only one with a real portrait. But oh, okay. um, some funny stuff. We did all this. Shit. I did all this shit on the last episode about Jesse Smollett getting uh arrested. Now that motherfucker gay Tupac free. So uh and now apparently I guess Meg about to go to jail. I want to know what's the real crime that you can get for how is that a crime for calling somebody a fake report and then you go to jail for five months? That still doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, what? Meg, Meg is for to jail? He's on he's out on bail right now because he he's has an appeal and he posted his bail. But they did all that craziness. They put him in like the psych ward the first day. It was looking lining up like they was gonna try to kill his ass up in there because the first day he was there, he was on psych ward and uh trying suicide to watch. Exactly. Yeah. I am not suicidal. I am not suicidal. And this is so crazy how uh I'm addicted to this. But I mean, but he ain't got nothing else though, if you think about it. That that's it, like his. This is it. After this story is like gone, it. out. This is it. This no, is and, last. This is it. Yeah, nobody gonna put him on no show. Nobody yeah. gonna do nothing like that. He will have to come up with some his own self. Right. He will have to piggyback off of this and just keep himself relevant. You know what I'm saying? I will, I will say Robert Downey Jr. wasn't shit before Iron Man. That's all I'm gonna say. Now he like one of the top paid actors. Period. But that ain't happening with him. That ain't happening. It's no, it's not happening with him. Ever. No, like no, he no. said he black. So oh, oh. I, was like, I, was like, I was like, this ain't happening with him. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just saying it. It's a will is a way. But I don't, I don't think, I don't think he about that. I don't think that he about that. Exactly. Like and he, he, you know what? He picked the worst time to fuck it up for himself because as much as much inclusion as they put in everything, like uh, Marvel was just talking about with they iron not iron knights or whatever iron um what is it iron heart series that's the one where it's like this chick for anybody who don't know iron heart is like tony stark gone and it's a female basically a female iron man who's basically just as smart and create the same thing now they over there including a binary character and then marvel just put out that whole thing about they stand by the lgbt community and um because that shit disney did with that florida bill and i'm just like man just it you fucked up a pivotal point to not to just get this out. You could have got the benefit of the doubt. You you know it's funny. He could have just dropped the racist part and said he got beat up by two people, and he still would have got it. But the fact that it was just the story was so you missed a bag like a big big bag. Big bag. No reason. At the end of the day, it was just no reason for him to do this. I don't know what he thought. It was just the time he he thought it was the best move for him. He didn't oh, think God. about the repercussions. That's he didn't think about it. Do, it's, you know, he didn't think do it. I said, Judge told him, so he said, I'm not suicidal. It's a dumbass guy. But it's, um, did y'all see that story about the <laughs> the transgender woman winning? I, I don't know if it was an NCAA or the Olympic, but she just won the swimming competition and she like, she killed she killed the competition but she transgender so she the first one so look they got the picture up of let me see if you can find a picture up of the actual what she right first off when she was a man she was like 400 
in like 32nd of all. But when she won the this one, she was like the number one woman, period. Let me see if but I can get this. Even, that's not even fair, though. Yeah. That's so hold on. Here we go. Here we go. So as William Thomas ranked 462nd in men swimming, as Leah Thomas ranked number one in the world. But that's not even oh, fair. Women, women, women. Like that's stupid. That, like because prime example, you got if you got LeBron James in the WNBA, and you only got LeBron James. That's say that's say we got somebody like somebody when we was the kids, Eric Snow. We're gonna get Eric Snow. Somebody we like, oh, this dude is crazy. And you put him in the WNBA, he a chance, he's gonna take over. He's gonna take over. He, he's the man. Bro, it was another one, it was another one for track. He was like terrible in track then crossed over the women's track and like blew the competition out of the water but we was talking about this earlier right we talking about inclusion so how far do y'all think they're gonna let this shit go get before they like all right now like because then like because it's so over inclusive of everything first off you got to know about every part of the community lgbtq plus community right off the bat as soon as they tell you something like if there was to be like gender fluid or pansexual you supposed to know what the fuck that is off the, i didn't i thought you was talking about pandas at first but now it's pansexual now you got this and so what it, i've seen pe people hold their kids back a year or two so they would shine in a sport and fail them on purpose it was a big story i've seen a couple years ago didn't notice but it shouldn't be a surprise parents will hold their kids back a year or so in school so when they get so they're a year older than the competition and and hence i mean and and um and their stats are 10 times better, right? So how long do you feel, and take this, right? Say a dude that sucked in the NBA, like Kwame Brown or whatever, right? Kwame Brown go get a, a be, uh, decides to go by a uh, transition to a woman. Not only does he break every record in the WNBA, if he can, he gets a higher contract. But she's still a woman at that point. And so he Still dunking, exactly. Still dunking I mean, out I mean, it's just like I said, I don't think there's no limit on it. Once you to open the door, it ain't really no closing it. I think it's I think I think it's just gonna be to a point where they gonna have to somebody gonna have to come out and say, okay, look, y'all, okay, we fucked up. This is like we fucked up. This is enough. Because it's not it's not fair, bro. Like it's not gonna be fair. And you know, not saying that men and women are not equal but in some things we're going to be stronger you know what i'm saying like we it's some things that's, it's not going to be fair like it's going to be crazy like prime or let's say you do this that's when you get somebody like mike tyson and then he go and fight in the women's boxing fucking he fuck around kill somebody you know what I'm saying like <laughs> like i don't want to see mike tyson fight uh layla ali you know what i'm saying like hell no like he is a beast but he'll kill her you know what I'm saying? Like it's not it's not gonna be fair. No, you know it's not gonna it's, be no fight. No kind of way. Ahead. But I mean, I'm surprised it ain't I think it's probably already been some cases where that's already happened, you know what I mean? Because it, it's just there's no way. I'm gonna tell you what it reminds me of. You know how you know how when you was a kid, I like I always tell stories about like when I was a kid, you know, everybody used to want to play for Waverly Belmont. And you know, like in Nashville, way a bit more, oh, you gotta play so we gotta play football. But then you like you said, you got these kids that they like. 15 years old and they playing in the 10 year old league and they just demolishing little kids. You know, they still farm and running truck sticking. They do everything to little kids, but they, they years older than these kids. So that's, that's kind of the same thing. It's, it's not going to be, it's, it's going to be like off. Like they're going to destroy, they're going to win. So I'm like, do they really win the trophy? Like if I come in second place, like, do he really win? Like, God damn. You know, it's, no, it's, it's, you know, it's it ain't, it ain't be, go ahead, there. It's my fault. Yeah, it ain't no fair about James. No, you know, we played for Unit, and they, they used to always tell us, you know, y'all older and all that. Like, no, nah, we was, you know, we was just like big kids, but <laughs> we played, you know, what I mean, we had skills and we was playing against them Waverly Bell Monster where they did have like a real deal 14 year old, you know what I mean? And sure. they still lost, but it, it, it still boys playing against boys you know what i mean it wasn't like it was uh, uh us playing against a team of girls you know what i mean so it's just i just feel like i just feel like it's gonna take the right person child to lose 
before somebody say something because if they just if they look at that person's stats and it says 460 second and he immediately became the first one like it as much as people want to say it'll never be equal as, as exactly. much as they, because this is i'm gonna tell you hold on i'm gonna tell you what this is what it is right now it's lucrative to cash in on the lgbtq community and nobody's really learning anything i just feel that it's just good to say you support them but for some of the people like but it was like when black lives matter happened right okay black Lives. i'm sorry when george floyd happened right well the nfl saying lift every voice and sing they're doing everything they want to the all-star game talking right say their names on the back of it right but yet Biden just signed a bill the other day giving, what is it, some billions, two or three billion over there for the war effort. Biden done signed a, a legislation when it was Asian hate. But yet we had this clear day example of what you could have did. We don't need uh, Nancy Pelosi taking a knee. We don't need none of that shit. When it was time for y'all to really act and put shit like they just made. This is wild. They just made lynching a, a hate crime, a criminal offense. Yes, yeah, how long states. did you niggas need to I know? Say though, some states you can still lynch people, but that but that's fucking wild. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, how 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 long what did what picture did you not have to see? When have you ever seen a non-hateful lynching? Every time you see it, it don't look like nothing positive about it. it I've never seen a white person hang another white person. I you uh. know what. I think, I think without, it, without it being without it being something tied to race, like you want to be a nigger lover, you know what I'm saying? Like I've seen some shit like that, you know what I'm saying? But it's always tied to that. So I get back to right now to you know to circle back to what I was saying is right now is it's everything. Unfortunately, the LGBTQ community will notice that they're getting the support because it's profitable. Same way we got supported and got some. HBCU grants and all this other shit. Right now, it's it's it's, it's profitable. But you notice right. when you wanted something to happen that somebody's really bringing the money, Dave Chappelle, Netflix didn't cancel him. Joe Rogan didn't take away the hundred million dollars that they. I'm sorry, Spotify didn't take away a hundred million dollars from Joe Rogan for saying nigga on anything else. But yet, Kevin Hart had to come off uh, the Grammys for saying uh, homophobic slur ten years ago. But Joe but Rogan I'm did. Thing, but Joe Rogan, and I'm saying Joe Rogan got paid a hundred million dollars. You get you get the parallels. I'm saying Joe Rogan was saying something racial. We should have did the same, even though if it was in the past, it should have done the same effect as it was to taking Kevin Hart off the Grammy. You like you say, it's about the money. You know, what I'm saying the L, yeah. the LG community, they got the money, they got the power. So that's why they the cancel culture. Most of the canceling is coming from them, but it ain't coming. From you know the racial slurs and stuff like that. You know, what I'm saying? you gotta you gotta think about the platform and what you're talking about. You're talking about somebody that's got their own show talking about what they want to talk about versus a, a a televised show that's gonna be broadcast regardless. People gotta watch it. You know what I mean? You don't gotta watch Joe Rogan show. Because I, I think I, honestly, no, I think which one is Rogan or Dave Chappelle? No, I was talking about Kevin Hart with the Grammys, like how they yeah, 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 yeah. But, but I, know, I was gonna say I think what they, honestly what they should do is they should make it like you know how you got some things like let's say like beach volleyball you might have co-ed you that? might have beach volleyball I think that they who's should a, make it who's a they huh? that you're talking about who's a they I'm talking, about the world. I'm talking about the world I'm talking about when it comes to this like these transgender like these transgender sports and stuff like that where you got like a transgender male a female that can cross over into the other sport they need to have a, a different league where it's like a co-ed lead where like there is no, because if not it's not going to be fair. it's I not going to be fair but just like you can still do it well i mean they can look they at it like this right you can look at it like this you had the winter olympics you had the summer olympics and then what was the uh solution to all the extra curricular sports that you could be a pro at the x games so you still are going to be highly regarded in the x games to have bmx and skateboarding and snowboard and all that type shit and it didn't interfere with the Olympics. But Tony Hawks, Dave Merritt, uh, Sean White, and all them still got the credit as an Olympian. Or, you know, well, the notoriety of somebody. But it was a sport in their lane, you know? And it didn't interfere with what the Olympics already had in place. I feel like I agree with your point, uh, Josh, about you should have a uh, 
you should have a league separate to where it's just transgender people paying against the transgender and you can still identify them as the woman or male who they are but it's almost like it's you got to look at it you've had a, a not an edge but you've had something done to you versus what you were naturally born at so you are nat unless you cut it off immediately. You are naturally like you're naturally going to get what was assigned to a male. So in that case, there's nothing wrong with you competing at this level, but you need to be in the category for that. So where you're only going against people who have went through the same process, which is started off whenever. So I agree with that. Cause, I, cause I think I think they they wouldn't even have to get their own sport. They could just do it like you know how you got the man's one hundred, man's two hundred. Because it's another division, you just yeah, add another division to it. They, they made yeah, they made a new division this year. They made that new uh, that new four by four to where you had the males and females, and they switched off. You know what I'm saying? They could make a whole new division to where like, hey, it's just like when you fight. If you fight, you got like the when well, you got the lightweight, the heavyweight, and then you got like a weight that wears like an open. It's an open way. Like, I can fight whoever. Like, some sports, you can do that. And they can do the same thing. They can have it to where, like, hey, everybody know this is an open, you know, like, it could be anybody in here. You know, it could be transgender, male, female. It could be whatever, whoever want to compete. Because that's the only way it's going to be fair. It's not going to be fair if you got, it, like, if you got a male that come over and dominate the female, you know what I'm saying, like, their 100 meter, you know, like, you got Flojo. Flojo still got the, the fastest record ever, like, her fastest and and like niggas, like Nick, like I need the niggas to hear this. I need, I need the niggas to hear this. There are women that will whoop your ass. Layla yeah. Ali is knocking you niggas out. So yeah. please do not think that because you are going over to there to a woman's sport, <laughs> you're just gonna dominate. You're just gonna dominate. You NBA. Let me get this clear. I'm not talking about the nigga at the YMCA going and thinking that he gonna pick <laughs> no. the NBA. Okay, the no. WNBA women are just as good as the nba don't get that shit confused have your ass you know, thinking you know, you're talking about pulling somebody from like the d league somebody yes. from C, somebody an uh, ex nba player that was good yes exactly like let's we're not talking about tyreek and quincy over there playing every day at antioch or at the antioch center or we at the ymc on charlotte and you just winning a whole bunch of runs or even some of my navy military niggas who winning captain's cup in the leagues that we got or all Navy and going to the WNBA and thinking you knocking them off. Candace Parker, I'm mean, Candace Parker will whoop your ass. Skylar Diggins will whoop your ass. Maya Moore will whoop your ass. What's my, my boo name? The tall one. Um, um, damn, what's her name? Uh, Cambridge, Elizabeth, Liz Cambridge. Whoop your, first off, Brittany Griner, free Brittany. Cause she ain't getting out of jail till May or April. Britney Griner, whoop so They said they had lost her or something. Shit, man, man they didn't have video recognition yet. I, I sent you. The, I sent you that message. It was like it was like they don't know what Britney Griner is. They lost. I was like, what do you mean they lost her? Britney Griner, like six Fuck feet it. fucking tall. I seen her first off. Shout out to Britney because Britney was in that bitch fresh as a motherfucker. I'm talking about flannel down, cool gray zone, free Britney, of course, but. Uh, she was fresh as a motherfucker. Do you know she lost her trial and she ain't coming back? She can't be put back. She basically gonna be there for like another two months. That is really fucking wild. That she and 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 they still hardly report that they want her to come come up out of there. But who would have thought in 2022 we looked at Joanna Man? I bet you ask all these new niggas, right? We looked at Joanna Man and the Ladybugs movie a long time ago as jokes. Joanna Man was supposed to be a joke. Now that shit really happening. Now, if you watch it with the same, some of these young niggas, they are so brave. They are so brave for what they standing on. Get it, Joanna. You shouldn't have to come out the league. Boy, now, now mind you, I watch this and still laugh. So, and now this is happening, what, to almost 20 years later? That is that is really wild how full circle we are. Like, that but, is just... But, what, but, you know, that's play devil's advocate. That's say that you do bring this... Well, you know, little, little LeBron over to, you know, the WNBA, and then he changed the game up. He's the biggest star, biggest sales, highest paid, and then all of a sudden, they they pay charts start going up. Then it's going to be like, damn, they, this is what they have. Of, yeah. I mean, it'll be work, but if it'd be funny if he's the only one who get paid. Then I promise you all that support going out the door. Yeah, they, they, they will be fighting him in the locker room. Them females, they ain't not playing about that. 
I don't I if 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 LeBron look at his daddy, if Bronny get any of his daddy muscle, it, first off, LeBron James Jr. is not transitioning to the WNBA. But for this scenario, if he was to become a grown ass man and then transition, his daddy's genetic is wow. Dwayne Wade's son is big as well, yeah. daughter, but yeah, big as fuck. That like the one like uh, Zaya is going to be fucking huge. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody about to be fighting her. No, like Magic Johnson, son. You know what I mean? I was, I was about to say Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson, son. Oh, ain't no way in hell I'm fighting that. No. <laughs> that's, that's a that's a lose lose situation. Yeah, it's like nah. every for every for every I, we said this before for every straight nigga or every straight man that think that gay people or trans whoever can't fight. That would be the ass. Not want that ass the funniest fights I've ever seen yeah. is straight getting beat up by by anybody of the LGBTQ community. So we recognize that everybody is strong. So we ain't saying that, but just I just think the tolerance will be done for uh that. like fighting the ugly nigga. I ain't fighting no ugly nigga. He ain't got shit to lose. Shit to lose, you know? No. <laughs> Don't mess with people that got nothing to lose. Seriously. Nothing That's, to lose. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Y'all see Deshaun Watson traded to the Browns? Yeah, he got that check. $230 million. What they do? Didn't he have like a little rape case? They made that go away and gave him oh, their money. Off, first off, first off, Deshaun was going civil suit. First off, I don't think Deshaun, I ain't going to say what he did and didn't do, but it was I. this all got out after he wanted to get out of Houston. Ironically, Brian Flores, same way. Like so about, like but he was basically on civil suits for like 22 civil cases of misconduct of basically pulling his meat out or trying to fuck with people during massages, right? And it was like over a long period, and the grand jury found it, dismissed it or found him innocent. And so he was able to lead the Texans, but he didn't play none of last season, so I don't think they had to pay him at all. But he he yeah, he basically got found free and he with the, the Browns now. Two hundred thirty million dollars guaranteed, I believe. Right? I think a hundred and I got to see this uh, the full breakdown of it, but I want to say like a hundred and fifty-two of it is guaranteed. I think it said one hundred fifty or something like that. That's okay. That's all I was thinking. One hundred fifty-two, yeah. one hundred fifty million is guaranteed. Yeah. And that was well, the exactly. Why would you go to the Browns? Because they offered me two hundred and thirty. I was like, I was like, the Browns, they can have they can have teenagers and high school kids on there. I don't care. Play every game, but I'm a bit. They gonna be like, damn, he the coldest person they get. That's it. That's it. It's all about what you do, not what everybody else do. Hell yeah. Get, get paid, young removed. man. Kanye got removed from the Grammys. So uh this hey, Kanye, bro, that Kanye and uh, that's another example. That's Kanye. another example. The Grammys, whatever Kanye done did. Ain't got shit to do with what he do on the microphone. And I hate Kanye, but the fact that I got to defend him is what I was saying earlier. When it costs you money or what's popular to do is what they going to do. All right. Kanye is being his invite for the Grammy to perform got rescinded because he is over here butthurt and stalking his old lady trying to get that old thing back. All right. Pete Davidson is make calls and take him out. Pull that card quick. Kardashians can pull that card. Hey. So it don't matter. It could be Kanye, it could be Jay-Z. They're going, he going against a, a Kardashian with you in they realm. Because they're gonna be like, it's us or him. And they're gonna be like, well, we're yeah. gonna go with Carl, okay? Because yeah, the Kardashians, you got you got five or six of them motherfuckers. So you saying we're gonna take rid get rid of all of them sitting in the front row? Nah, nah, nah. They got combined, they got billions and billions of followers. Maybe. Like, nah, the influence is too strong. Too, I mean, I been I was watching like I, I don't know, like I say, like three days ago, I went into a Kanye and Pete Davis rabbit hole, rabbit hole, and I was like, this is retarded. Like, I'm not understanding. This is that's when I started sending you stuff, in, and it was like they they arguments, and they were like, oh, we can meet up, bro. And I'm like, I, first of all, I can't see Pete Davis talking all this shit like this. I feel like not somebody else. Like, he he everybody he got he fight DL now. Steve Harvey was like. We from the old school. We cut a nigga. So he's like, he got his money on DL. Now, how you going to go toe-to-toe with a comedian? Like, motherfucker ain't going to have jokes. He going to have jokes. He ready. He, I mean, he going to, he going to, you going to be embarrassed. He going to have so much stuff. Because like he said, shit, he going to Saturday Night Live. You know Saturday Night Live. They ready. 
they ready to talk about Kanye. You know, they make whole skits. They make skits about you. They go viral every day. I, I still want I still want people to can't not cancel them, but just realize that y'all holding them to a different standard that nobody else could get away with. If anybody had daughters and Kanye was doing all this to your daughter, Kanye would have been dead. But because this nigga made Jesus walks and everything and Yeezys and boosts and everything, he could do. He just want his woman back. He's a fat. That is this is borderline crazy. But uh, we can wrap it there. Uh, this has been a great, 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 great episode. I did want to take this time to say um, I got my degree. Uh, finally, in. In. For the people here, you know, uh, where is it at? So, you know, uh, my first my first one, uh, it's another one coming. But, uh, you know, as y'all can see, I finally got my degree. Thank you. Uh, I, it means, I, I guess it, it means, I, I guess I get like semi-sentimental here. But no, it means a lot. If anybody knows me, um, I had a really hard time in school. And um, my sisters and everybody excelled. And it just, either with my folks, what? I never heard it. I didn't know that. Yeah, I really had a hard time in school. Uh, Darius was there. Uh, everybody just seemed to shine. And whether it would be whatever, I just thought I was dumb. So, you know, to all the stuff I've accomplished, um, it, easiest way to put it, I really thought I was dumb. So once you hear something a certain amount of times, you start acting what you told you are. And so I never really applied myself and at that age. And I, I pulled up sports and everything. I would just get so used to thinking I wasn't. And I stopped. So, you know, um, when I got to a certain point, uh, mainly when I had Zay, I told myself I would never settle for anything else again. Um, I just started pushing myself and little by little, um, I worked and I worked and I put in degrees and degrees. And so I have one associate here, my bachelor's is coming, they just have to mail it. Um, I have three, two, I have a, the, the CMA, and all the stuff I got from the Navy, and I got my first official one. So now everybody in my parents' household has a degree. And uh, this means a lot because if people know how times I've teared up and cried or whatever, thinking I wasn't that, I know now that I can do anything. And it's for anybody that's listening that thinks that you aren't something. Just know that I'm a living testament that anything that you really, really apply yourself for, the sky's the limit, whether it be a picture a podcast a tv show a restaurant anything um just know that uh this was one of the accomplishments in my life that i thought that i would never get and i finally can say i got one so uh, i wanted to show that off thank you for the people that have seen appreciated uh just ahead of times uh y'all got anything to come up for i know it's probably gonna be hard to top that but uh y'all got any events or anything coming up that y'all want to promote uh main thing man I, I like i deploy in like basically a month uh so you know hey i'm gonna try my best to stay in touch like hopefully like we we kind of heard some news so i think that more than likely what's gonna happen is we we leave out and report to the ship on the 18th but i don't think we're leaving until the beginning of may so i'll probably be able to be here for a little bit longer than what i thought uh so you know that's a blessing and uh just got to get ready try to get all my little business and everything together and promote what about I, you i want to say yeah definitely congratulations on that that degree man i know how how much work and how hard it was for you to finally get that accomplishment you know what i mean but you did it you kept you know what i mean you kept at it and you bust your ass for that shit and you well deserve it my brother and uh naji man we glad that you get to spend a little bit more time on, on this side of the sea but uh blessings always and you know we keep in our prayers and hope hope for the best but uh for me yeah you know how i am i keep going ain't stopping you know y'all ain't this ain't the last time y'all gonna see me you know i'll be back on this thing definitely definitely keep well, course, man, like i said it, you fit right in it's it's when i can get my brothers on it's just an easy flowing niggas don't understand it's great to have guests and i love it but when I get my, like my brother's on and shit like that, that's the easiest conversations to have because Josh has known me and Darius since high school or middle school or whatever. So it's an easy transition to just get into a vibe and comfort. And that's what makes our best episodes. But it's different talking to people from management. We can talk to anybody. We can talk about anything when you got people from management. Right, right. <laughs> that's how we grew up. That's exactly. it. We always been free. Exactly. But tell everybody any events you got scheduled up for. Um, there we else. 
Like I said, so Thursday we're gonna be uh we're gonna be down the street east, Diedrich Street, eleven to two. Come out there, get some conies, Italian nice. Uh, like I said, we got this Wedge Hill Marketplace that's gonna be popping out in South Nashville, coming here real soon. Oh, out south, man, you know what I mean. We we keeping it, you know, little bodega spot we got going. You feel me? So we just out here spreading love, showing love, and that's all we gonna do. That's why I'm born and raised out there by Wedge, with Twelfth Avenue South. Yeah, you know, I stay in all the hoods. Let everybody know your, let everybody know your um your IC handles and everything. Get in touch with you again. Yeah, uh, hit me up, Icebox six one five I C B O X six one five, uh, or Vehicle City County. Uh, like I said, y'all can hit me DM, see where I'm at. You know what I mean? Let me know you listen to the show. I always show love to those that fuck with us. You know, so hit me up. All right. And y'all make sure y'all check out our 8192 podcast merch, which is on our Shopify. You can find it in our on our links at the top of our page on our Instagram page, AMT underscore podcast is our IG. And you can also uh, make sure that you email us at the 819, the 8 more than 92 podcast at gmail.com. If you got any questions, tips, or if you need the site yourself to go ahead and place an order, make sure y'all get this merch. It's going to be fire. And then when the seasons come, we taking some off. So if you don't get it, we rolling in and out. And uh, I'm going to let this for a classic. We're going to go out on this note because y'all young niggas, since we talked about y'all, y'all don't know about the classics. We're going to go out on the beef up. All right, we've been beefing for a minute. It's a red hat. Uh, he done disqualified us. You stop beefing. Oh. beefing. This is my shorty right here with the glass on the stutter side. It's a black shirt. Clap your hands in. Is it City Boy Grand? Okay. Is it Zero? Okay. This is my boy AJ Shorty right here. This is my girl right here. We doing the dance. Back in this bitch, uh, know we full attack in this shit, uh, you know the full Mac came equipped, uh, so promise you.